Yo, what's going on everybody? It's your boy Potential Unleash. We're back with another video. One Piece Chapter 1027 titled An Unnatural or An Unbelievable Disaster. Let's get into it. So the cover page is basically Roger. He's run away from a lion because you doodled on his face. So then we're into Luffy. Roger's just such a big kid. But this chapter was insane. A lot of stuff happened. We got a lot of Luffy and Zoro action, so let's get into it. The chapter starts off, we look at Kara and Nekomamushi, basically after defeating Perispero, um, Wanda's like, hey, be careful, you guys don't want to turn into a Sulan accidentally, because we see that the sky split, and also, Yamato, she makes mention that, just like in Odin's book, it says that the sky split whenever Edward Newgate and Goldie Roger would fight, and I said this in previous videos, how technically it was an asterisk, because there's no way that the Pirate King and the Strongest Man, that whenever they clash that the skies would never split however we would never see it in the manga or in the anime but now it's confirmed that they split the skies and although yamato is impressive i feel like people were smoking that that yamato pack and were hopping on her something heavy because after the thunder bagua yamato all of a sudden she starts leaking from her head saying that yeah, that attack was a little bit too much for me, and I've seen a lot of people talk about how Yamato over Luffy, Yamato over Zoro. I disagree. Yamato fought a weakened Kaido. It was mentioned in here. I, now, it's still impressive. I don't want to take anything away from her, but she fought a weakened Kaido, so I'm not going to give her all the credit that everybody else has. I still do think she's strong. I still do think she's high first, low top tier, but to say that she's over Luffy, that's uh, not even a question. To say she's over Zoro, I think that's debatable but i still have zoro over her specifically after what happens during this chapter yamato her job is to protect momonosuke that's what luffy ordered her to do because she's like all right momo he, he, he don't know what he's doing like get get this little snake or something like that and momo's like who are you talking to i'm an adult now <laughs> but i find that interaction hilarious she goes on to momonosuke and kaido goes after her, them where luffy he then wraps his legs around kaido and then yamato's like well, I know. You want me to leave this to you? Like, all along, you want a 1v1? And Luffy's like, yeah. So, Yamato and Momonosuke, they dip where they're running away. But, however, they see that Onigashima, the little crumbs, is starting to crumble apart. And it's starting to hit and land down. Where, um, Yamato, she's like, alright, Momonosuke, here's the thing. Kaido, his powers are weakening. So, he's not going to be able to hold this much longer. And they also state that... Um, Onigashima reached the flower capital in under five minutes. So they're like, what to do? And Momo, he's like, all right, I turn into an adult to stop the clouds. They also, Momo's cute, it's confirmed that dragons don't fly. They dance around the clouds or dance on the clouds. And so he's like, all right, I'm going to stop this, but I don't know what to do. And then he also says, oh, well, if Kaido's power is weakening, then we got to stop Luffy. And Yamato's like, man, are you a naive? Like, you can't stop this. Luffy has to take down Kaido. He's doing everything in his power to do so. And which is kind of stupid to me, because even if um, they stop Luffy, what? Kaido's just going to drop Oni Kishima when it reaches the capital anyway. And to clarify, like I said, dragons, they don't fly. They dash through the clouds when they step on the clouds or the flame clouds. So basically, in under five minutes, Momonosuke's going to have to learn how to create flame clouds big enough and strong enough in order to keep Onigashima afloat while Luffy is fighting Kaido and everybody else is finishing up their battles. We cut back to the inside. I kind of got spoiled for this a little bit. I didn't get the matchup, but I got spoiled with how the end of the chapter happened, or specifically what happened to an individual character, which is King. Um, so basically, I am a little bit surprised. Usually how Oda does this fights, or their fights, it goes Luffy fights the strongest, Zoro fights the second strongest, Sanji fights the third strongest, and Sanji finishes first, then Zoro, and then Luffy. However, we got Luffy and then Zoro, and I want to make mention how Th now, this could just be me reaching as a Zoro fanboy. It's my favorite anime character, but Yamato, she stated that Luffy's the only one who can take down or defeat Kaido. And then we cut to the live floor, we cut to Zoro. I'm just saying. But what I want to give credit to is that this means that Zoro has been fighting King for around 10 minutes. Same with Sanji versus Queen, but the reason why I'm um, reiterating Zoro is because he's the one we look at this chapter. And so he's fighting King for a around 10 minutes and king he's also in his hybrid it looks a little weird 
I'm not gonna lie, but I guess it is what it is. Oh, I, well, it looks to me like it's in this hybrid. I probably won't know until after I see other people's reviews because sometimes I miss stuff and sometimes I say stuff that they don't. Um, but like I said, I'm pretty sure it's hybrid. And when he's interacting with Zoro when they're fighting, their clashes or different attacks is affecting the people around them, like slicing buildings and stuff. And so when they interact and clash, Zoro, he gets sent flying backwards where he runs into Frankie and Frankie catches him. He's like, hey, you need help? And Zoro's like, nah, I got this, even though he's pretty strong. But here's the thing. Even though Zoro got sent flying backwards, that was because one, King's in his hybrid and his strongest form, Zoro's not in Ashra yet, and two, that's because Zoro appeared, he cracked King's mask. Now this could be kind of dumb on my part, I didn't know that was a mask to begin with, I just thought that was King's character design, but people are like, King has never had anybody seen his face before, and Zoro was the one to crack it, so that's why King is pissed. And so, King is, I'm, I might have underestimated him a little bit, I still think Zoro's stronger. But King has been kind of impressive. Zoro, he tells Frankie to get out of there because, let's be real, even though Frankie's strong, he can't keep up with King. It, <laughs> he cannot. So Zoro and King, they get into it again. They're going back and forth. I believe um, King, he uses an attack called uh, Tankiodon, um, Divine Red Bow. And then Zoro, he uses his three sword style Ultra Tiger Hunt. They clash. And this is very interesting. We know that Zoro is more and really renowned for his physical strength, his sword style. I'm not going to say 100% depends on that, but a lot of his sword style is based off of his physical strength, even though he has other techniques. And this chapter, I'm not going to say he was being tossed around, but the two times that they clashed, it appeared to me that King actually was able to overwhelm Zoro and push him back a little bit. And as they clash Zoro, he cracks King's mask even more. But they get sent flying outside where basically uh, Zoro and King, they're outside. And Zoro says, well, if you're going for the kill, you should have used your sword. We know that King doesn't necessarily have a problem using his sword. He's just a weird fighter. He's not considered a swordsman. He fights with any means necessary. But Zoro's like, all right, if you're going to kill me, you should go all out. Because he said, this is what you did was unforgivable. And King says the same thing. So Zoro got overwhelmed slightly and he got knocked outside however king's mask is more broken i'd say about 25 percent you can kind of see his hair it's a little well in the color panels it's gray but you see a little bit of that and you can't really see king bleeding but he has armor on but you can see he has scratches up under his armor so my thing is this there's a couple reasons i'm confused and this is not a bad thing. This is a, a me issue. This is not an Oda issue. Um, he sent Zoro and King outside. Now, this makes sense because, let's be real. Sanji, Queen, Zoro, and King all fighting in the same spot. They don't got enough room. They're going to freaking destroy the live floor. So, it makes sense they got separated. Look at Ennis' lobby. We had Sanji and Jabra when they were fighting in the same room as Zoro and Kaku. Sanji and Zabra, uh, Zabra I think. I don't know why I'm saying, I'm thinking of Zabuza from Naruto, but Jabra, they took their fight outside and they finished it there. And so, obviously they did it for space purposes, but here's my thing, the order, like I said, Luffy, Kaido, uh, Zoro, and King, and Sanji and Queen, Sanji's fight usually wraps up first, then Zoro, then Luffy, but they're outside, so what does this mean? Because once Zoro takes down King, he, what's left for him to do the fodder that's for the other straw hats to deal with because well Zoro he'll have what will he do something more for this art because since he's outside the people who are also outside Momoskyu and Yamato will Momoskyu fly Zoro up to Kaido will Yamato and Zoro have interaction and the reason why I'm saying this is because I truly believe that Oda's not going to deter from this. I think Oda will will see one of two things. I think we'll either see Sanji vs. Queen next chapter or finish off Zoro vs. King. That's the only thing that makes sense to me. But overall, really good chapter. I'm really excited we got Zoro. Y'all know any time is Zoro in there. I don't care. It's a good chapter to me. But let me know your guys' thoughts about it in the comment section below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll hit the notification bell so you guys never miss out on a new video. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat. is on the screen in the description below. Thank you guys so much for watching. And don't forget to unleash your potential.